in Scotland, there once lived a man named Sandy McNeil. He was the kindest and most generous fellow you could ever hope to meet. He was well liked in his parish, for he kept up his fences and was quick to help a neighbor in need. He lived and worked on a rocky little highland farm, which he loved with all his heart. He couldn't wait to wake up each day and see the sun rise above the mountains and glint off the sea. His farm was on a high rise above Loch Nevis, where his clan had lived for centuries. They had once been the most powerful clan in the area, led by his great-grandfather Malcolm, until the Battle of Culloden. During the Second Jacobite Rebellion, Malcolm had died in that battle. The clan's fortune was lost, and the heads of clan were left with nothing more than a few rocky holdings. Since those days, the McNeils had declined in number, Sandy and a few aunts and uncles were all that were left. Though Sandy greeted each day with a smile, his lot could have been better. He had to struggle to make ends meet. The farm had precious little tillable soil and only a little more pasture, but Sandy made the best of it. He was a big strapping lad and a hard worker. Every day he would rise at first light, do the chores, have a small bite, then go out and labor in the fields. Sandy worked rain or shine until the sun went down. He led a lonely and monotonous existence. But one thing gave Sandy joy, and that was tending to his animals. Feeding them was the best part of the day. No matter what the weather, they gambled and sported about the fields. Sandy loved to watch them. For him, they represented the pure love of living. Every day it warmed Sandy's heart to see his cow, his pig, and his goose lined up at the fence waiting for their breakfast. Though all animals loved Sandy, one type in particular was head over heels in love with him. Dogs found him irresistible. It was uncanny. Every hour of the day, dogs sought him out. They came from all about the countryside, ecstatic to be in his company. With so many dog friends, why would Sandy need one of his own? He never saw the need of it. Well, Sandy's daily rhythm never varied, but for two exceptions. Each Saturday night, he went down to the Rusty Nail, the pub in the village, and had a beer with his friend Hugh, and on Sunday, he went to church and had a day of rest. On his Saturday stroll to the pub, an entourage of many sorts of dogs always followed him. When Sandy got to the door of the pub, he would turn to the dogs and say, Time y'all went home now, laddies. The dogs were terribly disappointed, but they obeyed him at once. Sandy always looked forward to his weekly sojourn to the pub. It was the place he went to see his friends, and he loved dancing to the live band. Sandy's good friend Hugh also enjoyed the music and the atmosphere. Hugh had an oddball sense of humor that always got people laughing. Sandy almost always left the pub in a good mood. Sandy's routine kept on day in and day out, week after week, month after month until a very strange evening in November. 
Harvest was long over, there was not much to do on the farm, and Sandy felt a bit despondent. He felt he'd been working hard for years and had not much to show for it. On Saturday, he went down for his weekly pint. Hugh and the bartender tried to cheer him up, but to no avail. He left the pub a little before midnight, still feeling low. It was a clear, moonlit night. As he walked, he looked out at the silvery glow of the heather, smelled the earthy tang of peat smoke. Sandy happened to look behind him and noticed, some ways off, a big black dog. It was abnormally big, huge, as big as a Shetland pony. Sandy knew every dog in the parish, and this one he'd never seen. The dog was a fine, big black wolfhound, a breed that was worth lots of money. Must belong to a rich farmer from another parish, Sandy thought. What would it be doing here? The dog came up to Sandy and stared at him with its big red eyes. What are you doing all by yourself in the middle of the night, laddie? Sandy inquired. You'd best be getting back home. Off with you now. The dog didn't stir, and Sandy was used to dogs obeying him at once. Sandy was a little disconcerted. The doc dog was acting very peculiar. Sandy felt a small twinge of fear, but forced himself to contain it. He knew that dogs can sense fear, and that showing fear is a bad mistake. He looked long at the dog, and at last it came to him that he had nothing to fear. It was showing no signs of aggression, no barks, no growls. It just kept staring at him with a very intense focus. Sandy decided the best thing to do was break the ice and try to make a connection. Well, big laddie, he said, I'll wager you're hungry and thirsty. Come along with me, I'll give you some refreshment. The dog looked at Sandy with full understanding. Sandy made for home with the dog stepping right behind him as docile as could be. As they walked along, Sandy noticed a bank of dark clouds scudding in from the west. Sandy felt grateful for his thick jacket. The clouds soon met them and delivered a cool, fresh sprinkling of rain felt good on Sandy's face. But after a bit, the rain became a major downpour. Sandy just turned up his collar and kept on. The dog seemed to take no notice. Soon the outline of Sandy's cozy button bend came into view. They marched down the drive and Sandy went in the kitchen door with the dog close on his heels. Sandy stirred up the coals and soon had a small blaze going. Sandy thought the dog would come up close to the fire and warm itself, but the animal stayed back a bit. Suit yourself, laddie, Sandy remarked. Let's see to some food and drink to send you on your way. In his pantry, Sandy found a few ham bones and with meat on them. He put them on a plate and poured out a saucer of milk. Sandy made his way back to the kitchen, bearing the two items. He thought the dog would show some excitement when he smelled the food, but the beast moved not a muscle. Sandy brought the dishes over to the dog and set them down. Sandy had a keen nose, but he noticed as he stood up that the dog had no smell. It was odd. They had just traveled through a heavy downpour, yet Sandy smelled none of the characteristic pungent smell of a wet dog. Equally mysterious, the dog showed no reaction to the tantalizing morsels set in front of him. Uh, perhaps he needs a little encouragement, thought Sandy. The dog was completely calm. Sandy made his way towards him, intending to give him a gentle pat on the neck. Sandy reached out to touch the dog. I got the shock of his life. His hand passed right through and continued through the air, coming to rest on Sandy's leg. Sandy realized that this wasn't a flesh and blood dog at all. It was a ghost dog.